In this video, in our How To GAN series, we'll provide a basic understanding of how to build a GAN transistor using a low cost substrate and a large, well developed infrastructure. By doing this, devices can be produced in large volumes, reliably, and at low cost. Building a GAN transistor starts with the selection of a substrate material. Next is the growth of the heteroepitaxy. The wafer is then processed in a standard CMOS fab. And finally, electrical connections to the outside world are made. Heteroepitaxy is a process whereby one type of crystal structure is grown on top of a different crystal. Because GAN crystals have not been readily available and are very expensive to grow, there has been much work focused on growing GAN crystals on top of a more convenient platform such as sapphire, silicon carbide, or more recently silicon. Referring to the table here, there are trade-offs between any of the three listed choices for a substrate material. For example, sapphire has a 16% mismatch to GAN crystal lattice and has poor thermal conductivity. Silicon carbide, on the other hand, has a reasonably good lattice match and excellent thermal conductivity. The disadvantage of silicon carbide is the cost of the starting crystal substrate, which can be up to 100 times the cost of a silicon substrate of the same diameter. Silicon is not an ideal base for a GAN heteroepitaxial structure due to lattice mismatch and the mismatch of the thermal expansion coefficients. Silicon, however, is the least expensive material and there is a large and well-developed infrastructure to process devices on silicon substrates. For these reasons, silicon carbide is commonly used in applications that require very high power dissipation inside the transistor, such as linear RF power amplifiers. Silicon is used for devices in more cost-sensitive switching power conversion applications such as DC to DC conversion, AC to DC conversion, Class D audio amplifiers, and motion control. Building a GAN transistor starts with the process of growing the gallium nitride aluminum gallium nitride heterostructure onto a substrate. A GAN heteroepitaxial structure involves at least four growth stages that we'll illustrate here. The starting material of either silicon carbide or silicon is heated in a reaction chamber. A layer of aluminum nitride is then grown to create a seed layer. Next, a series of aluminum gallium nitride buffer layers create the transition to the GAN crystal. Finally, the thin algan barrier is grown on top of the GAN crystal to create a thin strain layer that induces the formation of a two-dimensional electron gas. One common method for making GAN transistors includes an additional GAN layer grown on top of the algan barrier doped with p-type impurities such as magnesium or iron. By adding this doped layer, the structure can be used to create an enhancement mode transistor. Fabricating a high electron mobility transistor, or HEMPT, from a heteroepitaxial substrate can be accomplished in a series of steps. One example of a simplified process for making an enhancement mode HEMPT with a PGAN gate is shown here. The process steps are as follows. First, deposit gate metal and define a gate pattern using photoresist as a protecting layer. Next, etch the gate metal and the PGAN crystal. Then, deposit insulating material and create contact openings to the source, drain, and gate. You can then deposit a first aluminum metal layer and define the metal pattern. Deposit an inner layer dielectric. Cut vias between metal layers, form tungsten via plugs. Deposit and define a second aluminum metal layer. Lastly, deposit and define a third aluminum layer and deposit final passivation layers. 
This is an actual cross-section of an EGAN FET from EPC. The tiny gates, drain, and source electrodes highlighted in yellow can barely be seen. There are three metal layers to conduct the current to the surface connections with very low resistance. EPC manufactures this device in a standard silicon foundry in Taiwan right alongside CMOS waivers, which allows manufacturing to increase production volumes quickly and at low costs. Following the wafer fabrication, provisions are needed to make electrical connections to the device. The preferred method for making these connections is by soldering directly to the contacts. A typical process for creating solder bars or balls on an enhancement mode GAN hemp is shown here. The process steps are as follows. It starts with the finished wafers with openings in the passivation. Metal 3 is partially exposed. Next, photopolyimide is deposited and removed in the area where the solder is desired. Then an underbump metal is deposited to create an interface between the aluminum top metal and the solderable material. Next, a photoresist is used to define where the solder will be plated, and then copper and solder are plated in that opening. The photoresist is removed and the underbump metal is etched, and the solderable metal is reflowed to form the solder balls. Following solder bar formation, the completed wafer looks like the example here. The individual devices are singulated and the final chip scale transistor may look like this. This device is now ready to be soldered onto a printed circuit board or onto a lead frame to be incorporated into a plastic molded package. As shown in this video, the building of a GAN transistor starts with the selection of a substrate material. Then the heteroepitaxy is grown and the wafer is processed in a standard CMOS fab. Finally, electrical connections to the outside world are made. Thus, a high-performing GAN transistor is built utilizing the well-developed, low-cost silicon manufacturing infrastructure. For more detailed information about material characteristics of GAN transistors, please see the third edition textbook, GAN Transistors for Efficient Power Conversion or view more videos in the How To GAN series. And for more information on eGAN FETs and IC products and evaluation kits, go to epc-co.com.